down in South Beach. That's major season finale. And we bringing y'all the hometown kid, Miami Dolphins, Jerome Bates. to hop on this yacht you already know the drill we just in south beach with it let's get it Hey Jerome, man. What's up? We here, man. We yeah. at we at MIA, man. Yeah, yeah. You the we got a yacht. You know what I mean? It's another yacht behind us. This how you doing it, huh? I mean, this Miami for you. This Miami. This hey, Miami for you. hey, tell me about it, man. So, hey, look, we got to jump right into it, man. Thanks for yeah. being on that's major season finale. Uh, it's a special one for everybody, man. You the hometown kid from yeah. Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. You down here, you've been playing for the Dolphins. How long now? This is my sixth year. It's my just sixth year. Yeah. Six year in the NFL, and you've been killing it, man. So uh, at what age did you start playing football? And was this always your dream yeah. growing up to be a professional NFL player? Uh, I started playing when I was about six years old. Uh, I moved from Maple Heights to you know, Cleveland, Cleveland. Okay. And um, I seen the Super Bowl one year, and I told my dad, like, this is what I want to do. Like, okay. I want to play this sport. He's like, wait till we move, and we can do it. And uh, honestly, I didn't know I was really good in football until about, like, high school. Okay. Uh, like, my first offer was Ohio State, and that kind of blew up, you know, in the statewide. Like, you know, you got Ohio State offer, but I was only a sophomore, so I didn't really think of it. I got two more years of high school. I wasn't thinking about college, so. Um, sophomore in high school. That's when I realized, like, okay, I can really be something special. In this. So you know you was probably special around that time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, speaking of high school, mm -hmm. for Benedictine, you actually won a state title. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about that journey and, you know, what you can remember from that. Because, I mean, that's a big deal. You won yeah. a state championship. Man, I think that was, like, one of my biggest accomplishments I ever had in my life, if I'm being <laughs> real with you. But something about growing up with guys for four years and you're all from the same area, generally, uh, mm -hmm. You know, the tradition that my high school had, you know, we needed to win another state championship to be called the home champions. Okay. That pressure of just like doing it your senior year, it's like, you know, you can't really make that up. It was like that high school yeah. know, dream story. So uh, just to do that and, and really go through that process, I, I always cherished in the moments. And even now, like my best friends are from Bitter 18 and I truly love that school. Oh, it's still to this day, huh? To this day, to this day. So. Being a phenomenal high school athlete, yeah. um, obviously you had, I mean, hella people recruiting you from your junior year, you already said sophomore year, Old State was already after you. Let's talk about Old State a little bit, a little yeah. bit about your time there. Uh, you mentioned earlier that y'all did win a, a Big Ten championship. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about your times yeah. uh, during your college career. Yeah, you I think Ohio that. State, that was the most, the biggest time where I developed as a person. Okay. Um, I developed as an athlete. I just developed so much in that, you know, three years, that short three years. Uh, you know, that that time I had, it was I really got to understand who I was as a person. I really got to understand like how good I can be in football. Okay. I got understood like how much hard work can really take you to another level. Uh, well, how did it develop. make you better? How did it make you better as an athlete? It was like our team was so stacked. Yeah. Practice was harder than the games. Mm. So like. Coming to the league, I was used to everybody on this field is nice. Cause okay. that's what I'm used to. Like everybody on this field is nice. So when the people say like you're developed at Ohio State, that's what it means. It's like every single day you're playing against, you know, potentially first round draft picks. Okay. Just being yeah. real. Yeah, that makes sense. And that makes sense. That pushes your game to another level. That pushes your, you know, competitive edge to another level. And so when I got to NFL, it was like, I know what I can do. I know what I'm supposed to do and I'm gonna do it. Okay. 
So look, we're right in the realm of the NFL draft right now. Um, I want you to talk to me a little bit about that process. You know, um, where did you think you would end up landing in the NFL draft? And, uh, you know, when you got drafted, what did that feel like? Yeah, I think like every athlete, if you, you know, a competitive athlete, of course you think you're the best whatever position you play at, you know. Uh, but I know for a fact I was better than a lot of guys picked before me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, name some names, man. I ain't gonna name them. <laughs> Simply, uh, yeah. It's kind of one of those things yeah. like the NFL, it's a three to four career. So who's mm -hmm. around now that's not around that, you know, got picked? That's that's where you get your names from. Right. Um, and it's no knock to them. It's just, that's reality. You're not gonna last in this league too long. Like, it's just reality. Mm -hmm. um, and you saying you still here. And I'm still here. You I'm still, still here. doing it. I'm still <laughs> the same team. I'm still doing my things. So. Yeah. But once you finally see your name cross that, that board, uh, it's nothing like it. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So let's get on your first year in the NFL as a rookie. I mean, you get to the NFL and you're probably playing against players that you were a fan of growing up. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Um, Tell me some players or some surreal moments you had in your rookie season, you know, where it's like, damn, this person is really across from me right now. I think the biggest one that I remember vividly was in uh, New England. You know you gotta play him, but at the same time, it's like, I used to play with you in Madden all day <laughs> long, bro. Like, you yeah. are the number one, if you have a draft, the overall draft with NFL, you're picking Tom Brady first. Right, right, that, right. It's just what it was. And yeah. Just to go up against him, it was like, this is ridiculous. So Not Tom Brady, Tom him, Brady like, is the guy. He was, he was that far, was it. Because he's the man at, you know, the Patriots. Like, mm -hmm. when you think of the Patriots, you think of Tom Brady. For sure. Speaking yeah. of GOAT quarterbacks, you yeah. know, you got Patrick Mahomes, right? Yeah. And you have, what is it, the longest sack in NFL history, tied for the longest sack, 30 yeah. yards on Patrick <laughs> Mahomes, man. So, yeah. like, when you did that, you know, did that register with you at the time, or it's just like, I'm just out here playing ball? Did it register with you afterwards, or? Uh, that year was interesting to me, because I was <laughs> truly, I'm a competitive person, and yeah. at the time, the Chiefs was rolling. Like, yeah. they were a great team. They still uh, are right now. They still yeah. are. Look, they so just won. I truly just wanted to be, uh, I wanted to give my best effort against the best team. Like, mm -hmm. when those lights come on and it's time to play the best talent, I want you to say, that 55 showed up. And that's what it was. Like, I did whatever mm -hmm. it took. I, you know, I played some different positions that game, and uh, it just so happens that game, I was rushing the edge, and I really got to show my talent. I mean, another career highlight for yours. I mean, this goes back to your rookie season. Mm -hmm. You got the pick, got the interception, and you actually brought it back to the house for yeah. a TD. I mean, that's something that a lot of players at your position, they might not ever get that their whole career. Mm -hmm. um, was that moment too new for you because it was your rookie season to where you couldn't really take in what you had just done? Or, you know, how did you feel about that? Being no, able to get that team? No, I still was young. I think people mm -hmm. don't realize, like, I was still only 21. Right, like, right, I was right. still a young <laughs> kid. Like, I was 20, mm -hmm. just turned 21. Uh, so I always had that mind of, you know, I was recruited to play running back. I was recruited to play offense. So mm -hmm. when I got the ball in my hands, it was like, if you catch a pick on defense, yeah, the the standard is to score. For uh, sure. And just to have that in my rookie year, it was like another uh, moment where I was like, I can really play in this league. I truly appreciate it. Shout out Sam Darnold. So. <laughs> good. Shout out to Sam. Shout out to Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so look, man, switching tunes just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, even though this is a football moment, yeah. but it's a moment that's going to stick with you forever. And that moment, you probably know what I'm going to bring up is, where is my mama at? <laughs> my mama, good. Hey, I'm looking for my mama, bro. I can't see her. Where is my mama, bro? I can't find my mama, bro. Man, my mama probably is going crazy right now. Bro, where is my mama, though? Yeah. Where is my mama is something that went viral at the time. Yep. I mean, I don't know how many times you said it. What was about? 10? Uh, 
I think it came out to be like 18 or something. Oh man, 18 times. Video was like 18 times, I said it. <laughs> uh, 18 times, where is my mama? I mean, it still goes viral right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know yeah. what I mean? What, what do you feel about that moment and it being attached to your career and to your legacy yeah. for the rest of your life, basically? I feel like people don't realize that I'm truly a mama's boy. Like, I, I love, I'm the baby of the family. Uh, so I gravitate towards my mother. Like I, I just gravitate towards it. And uh, for her to have that moment and to share that with me, you know, people will forget that we were a terrible team that year. Like we were 0-7 yeah. at the time, we were 0-6 or something. Yeah. We won that game, that was our first win. Uh, so that moment was special, it was like, we finally won. Like, of course you yeah. don't want it to be that long, but reality was, it wasn't that good and we finally won. Um, Feel good to get a W. To, to do that in front of your mom, you just felt proud. I found my mom. Found her. So back to the field, back to the football player, mm -hmm. you know, because what we haven't talked about is what actually makes you great. You know what I mean? Yeah. You had several seasons now where you've gotten over 100 tackles, you know, like we said before, a little small for the position, but you're really fast. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're a special talent. You're able to cover the field in many ways. You're kind of able to play multiple positions. Yeah. Uh, what is it about yourself that you would say that makes you such a unique football player? I think for me is man, I'm versatile and I'm I'm just cerebral. Like yeah. if you run two plays, you know, in front of me during a game, that second play I'm gonna pick up on it. Mm. That mm. that's just what it is what it is. Like I can pick up on football. I truly love the game of football mm -hmm. and uh you know, I pay attention to it. So uh, that that's just me. Like I can play pretty much anywhere. I'm a team player, so you can put me at a safety type of role or a linebacker or a DN type of role. If it helps the team, I'm down to do it. And I'm going to give you the best I got. And, you know, uh, for me, the best I got has been pretty good. So Yeah, for sure. I, I appreciate that. And I just love the game. And I you know, pick up on the game. And it's working out for me. It truly has. You got a high IQ for sure. Um, a question that your sister actually just brought up on the boat is like, mm -hmm. what comes out when you're out there playing? You know, is, yeah. do you become a different person? She says, does the lion come out? You know, yeah. does a lion come out? I always tell this analogy Cause, of Because like, you, you, you a reserved, laid back yeah, dude, you yeah, know? Yeah. You cool, laid back. <laughs> but when you out there on that field to play such a physical sport, how are you able to do that, you know? I always tell people, like, just imagine that person has everything you hold dear to your heart. Okay. Like, your kids, your family, your money, whatever is important to you, mm -hmm. that person has it. What are you going to sure. do to get it back? You're going to run a little bit harder. You're going to hit them a little bit harder. You're going to do anything. You're going to scratch. You're going to claw to get what you want back. You know, I cherish, I love being able to you know, do opportunities like this and go on boats. And, oh yeah. But yeah. I know it's these guys that just got drafted this, you know, this round that they want it. Yeah, uh, and they so hungry. And it's my choice to either, yeah. I'm gonna let them get it or uh, I'm gonna just take it away from them. So uh, gotcha. you just gotta have that mindset. I hear you. That's where it all ties in. Ties so in speaking together. of that, man, speaking of that, we're in Miami, you live in Miami, you're young, black, rich and lit how are you able to stay focused down here it's all about balance bro yeah i'm not gonna say i'm the most disciplined or i'm the most <laughs> craziest guy i'm not gonna uh -huh. say that it's all about balance like i like being able to i can go on a boat but you're gonna also see me after practice working out you're gonna okay uh you're gonna see me on the beach kicking it but you're gonna also see me on the beach sweating and going hard so it's all about balance i learned that from uh coach fickle man he's my college linebacker coach uh, that was the biggest message. Like, I'm not going to tell you to be this guy and be this guy. No. Just be who you are. Just have a balanced role. And uh, I just applied that to my, my whole life. As long as I'm balanced, I'm good. For sure. All right. So you, let me tell you one thing I've noticed. You're one of the fly guys in the league. You know, you come to the arena, you're usually dripped out. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, all kind of gear. You know, you iced out. Is that something that you take pride in coming to the arena? You know, is that something you think about? Is that like an image that you're going for? You know, or you, would you say you always been like this? No, man, I, <laughs> I've probably been the opposite. You know, I was that really? kid of, I'm the youngest, so I kind of get all the hand-me-downs. Mm. Uh, I kind of got all the, you know, you're the youngest. <laughs> like, you gotta just Young, take what you yeah, get yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You take the scraps. So yeah. <laughs> when I got to this level of like, I can get what I want. I remember my, yeah. my rookie year, I was buying new tennis shoes literally like every week. Just because I could finally do it. Yeah. And I wasn't used to that. I remember, you know, wearing my cousins and my 
my brother's shoes and my dad's shoes. So like now when I got my own money and I can mm -hmm. do my own thing, I really want to do that. But I think now is like one of those, I just want to be, you know, when you think of my, my name and you think of me, yeah. oh, he a good looking dude. Uh, I kind of pride myself on that. It's not really about what I wear. It's kind of just, I wanted to be that. So no stylist, no nothing? Nah, uh, I would say like I have like shoppers, like they'll you know, hit me up like, oh, okay. we got this at the store. But as far as like you're styling my own clothes, mm -hmm. my wardrobe, yeah. you know, I'll say like my best friend would, Yo, what you think about this, right? Uh, like, I got this outfit. What you think? <laughs> you know, I got that. But like, as far as like, shout out to Rory. Yeah, that, that's my, that's my dog. So. Uh, but that's just like the mindset I have. Of, you know, I kind of just be myself, and people just gravitate towards that. Got you. And let's talk a little bit about life off of the football field. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what does Jerome Baker like to do for fun? You know what I mean? How? What? Tell me about the lifestyle, man. Take me there, man. Take yeah, me there. I'm. As you can see, like right now, man, I, yeah. I love spending time with yeah. people. We on um, the yacht right now. I love new It's a lot of people here, by the way. Yeah, you, you know. Just can't see them. They're here, though. I love yeah. new experiences, man. I love to travel. I love, mm -hmm. uh, I respect everybody. So I respect people's cultures and where they came from. And mm -hmm. uh, I embrace that. So uh, that's why I have a wide variety of people I, you know, interact with. So, mm -hmm. um, man, it, it's Miami. You can. Honestly, every single day you can find something new. Right? Winwood, the South Beach, the Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. It's it's one of those cities of every day you can pretty much have a ball. So yeah, uh, and like I'm, going to red carpet events. Yeah, it's it's pretty much, it's all here. Like every year, <laughs> every week, there's something new. The F1, the Miami Heat, mm -hmm. Marlins, the uh, the Rolling Loud, the concerts. It, it's just like. Every week, the clubs, the tourists, the, the anything mm. you name, it comes through Miami. Oh, you about to go on a, a cruise, you gotta come through Miami. So yeah. uh, I really embrace the culture of Miami of just being that you know, wide you know, community uh, type of place. And it just fits my, you know, my style and I, I truly embrace it. And I heard about the legendary Halloween parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's actually uh, my, I'm known for my July 4th parties. Oh, July 4th, okay. But I just started the Halloween parties this year, or well, last year. And uh, I think it's like one of those, it's gonna be a while, you know, it's gonna be yeah. around for a long, people really enjoy it. And I love, you know, having people, you know, have a good time. So I actually love being a host. I love, you know, making people have a good time. So. Uh, yeah, my Halloween party, it, it, it definitely lit. Hey man, I would appreciate an invite to this year's for Halloween sure, party. For sure, for <laughs> sure. I'm gonna hold you to it too. For sure. All right, so off the field, yeah. um, you're not just a football player, you know, you got business endeavors. Um, I want you to talk to me about that a little bit um, mm -hmm. because of course there's life after football. Yeah. And uh, you know, how do you see yourself moving after football is over with and you know what things do you have in place or that you want to have in place yeah like i always i always appreciated that when i was young i experienced a lot of things like, i might not have liked everything but i experienced it so i got into real estate early on i tried to see how it feel okay i got into a lot of different avenues to see like what i like it uh for me it's easy for me to invest in things that i personally like i love working out i love you know, having fun kicking it um, I love just you know, being in a nice house. Mm -hmm. So all those things, that's what I you know got into my lanes of like investments and things like that. I don't want to get into something I don't you know, enjoy. So uh, I invested in a brewery. I invested in uh, a gym. I invested in a lot of different things that I personally like doing. So you know when football is over with, I'm not scrambling like what I'm gonna do next. It's right, right, like, right. All right, now I can just focus in on the things I already got going. So all right, we recently visited your childhood home yep. um, you just spoke about your dad you spoke about your mom got a chance to see them talk to them a little bit mm -hmm. uh see all of your achievements um and i can tell you just you know they brought you up real good you yeah. know and one of the things that you know you were nominated for once was the walter payton man of the year award yeah. and you know that's a, that award is because you know you like to give back as well mm -hmm. um talk to me a little bit about the importance of giving back Man, I'll say this, this is, that's all credit to my dad. You know, when I was seven or eight years old, he started a nonprofit, Minnesota Central in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was basically just a mentor, inner city kids. That's all I grew up on. You know, when I got to this level, it was like no brainer. That's the first thing I want to do is just, uh, help others. So, 
it's just kind of just instilled in me. It's in my DNA. So look, Lash, you got a season coming up. Yeah. Tell me about some personal goals you got for yourself and some goals that, you know, you have for the team this upcoming year. You know, you got you on the defense, mm -hmm. you got Tariq Hill, offense. You, I mean, you got a slew of players. Yeah. What's the goals, man? What's your goals and what's the goals for the team? I think like that's where your competitive side come in. It's like you got all these great players. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the one that's going to say our defense is weak in the middle. Yeah. No, so I'm going to step up my games. And that's where like, you know, this year we got all these great players coming in. But one thing for these past six years, you can say is number 55 has been there and it's been a strong point. And, and this is not going to be another yeah. year. Like this is going to be year you're going to say the same thing. Uh, this is a big year for me. It's a big team for the Dolphins. I mean, we have a lot of excitement. You know, we're just coming off, going to the playoffs, and I don't know how Absolutely. long. Absolutely. Congratulations, so. too. Congrats uh, on making that. the playoffs, man. Now it's like, we have a team. We have the coaching staff. There's no excuse. Let's go get it. But for me, man, I, I truly want to have one of the best years I had, you know, in my career. Uh, I always take that approach of, you know, I had some great years, but why not this year? So I'm ready. For sure. Hey, well, there it is. Um, I'm about to get back out here have my fun on this yacht yeah you know we about to about to turn up a little bit but we about to check back in with you tomorrow morning as yeah. we watch my man jerome work out pro athlete work out let's do it because it's work hard play hard that's major let's get it check you tomorrow let's do it <laughs> She was just a one night More loud, more rocks, more higher Running up the money, we been pulling all night More bands, package in, more grams Strip club, making money fly, watch out dance In love with the money, no, no, we don't romance They chasing, I'm chasing money, no, no, we don't romance Four wheel, paper plates, heavy cake Real n SP, heavyweight Hella a lot of money, lot of Show the 50 birds, damn, that's a lot of boy. All that up, where you get it from, I gotta know I was on the six, posted at the car store Ain't cuffing on that, cause she ain't right She ain't right. Said I'm just fucking on that, when I'm done, she got it Oh, yeah, all the trappers, boy dealers, gold realers Bad bitch, foul money, gold dealers Bow sellers, brick, deep in, real ballers Dealers, kingpin, hey More money, more, more fire Switch number, she was just a one night More loud, more rocks, more higher Running up the money, we been pulling all night More bands, package in, more grams Strip club, making money fly, watch them dance In love with the money, no, no, we don't romance They chasing, I'm chasing money Season one, that's major, that's major Headshots, real delicious Young thoughts, cougar thoughts, still hit them Whole hood love me, I was in the field with them Where the bird hit my line, I can still get them